So welcome to uh, DMW Lecture Officially One, Marketing 101. Um, I believe all of you know something about marketing. I mean, you're here after all, so you have done some of this. Um, and today I just want to leave you with four frameworks to kind of think about to anchor you for the next, is it 10 weeks now? How many weeks? We should have like a counter. Okay, um, I brought these two questions because the past three seasons, this conversation always kind of comes up. Um, and feel free to answer like what you think. You know, is marketing really just content these days? Any, any thoughts, hot takes? It's everything that you Mostly? Yeah. Okay. What do, you think of, what do you think of that, Josh? Marketing is just content? He's like, I'm filming, okay. <laughs> what is the word messaging? Is messaging, messaging and con message and content the same thing? Oh, we can get into it, right? The next one, the next common one. Is marketing just about building an audience these days? What do you guys think? It's all the same thing? I mean, there are tons of like, brands which everyone loves, but they don't necessarily have an audience. And okay. they're, doing, they're definitely doing something, right? Uh, so there are exceptions, I would say. Yeah. I, I think marketing is more about reaching more people and reaching unknown people more than like just building an audience. You build an audience with the actual content, but I feel like you just reach a wider audience with marketing. Okay. I think uh, with a big enough audience, you can have a degree of credibility and influence, but whether you need the right audience to actually ship product and, and make money. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I kind of feel, I want you to start thinking about, when you think about marketing, there should be an action component. I think that's a really good way to think about it. So if I were to say what marketing is, I'd say it's a compelling way to share what you're doing with the world. That's the first part. So you're kind of thinking there's content involved, there, there's those aspects building audience, right? And get people to do the thing you want them to do. I think that's a really important thing about marketing. So Bill Space makes content. A lot of it is also marketing and trying to get people to do something, right? Some of you are making content, but you're not necessarily getting people to do something besides following, right? So there's, I'm, I just kind of want you to like start thinking about the actions that you want people to take whenever you specifically kind of do marketing. So, um, and I want to get into the four frameworks. Let's look at this. I want to start out with this video. How many of you have seen this? Yeah, let me just, uh, let me play this. And also, if you guys want more, we just keep watching the whole thing. I'm inheriting $46 billion from a man I've never met before. And that's billions with a B. You guys want to watch more? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I live with my stepsister um, in New England. Actually, I really live in my car because her boyfriend's crazy. I uh, love my sister to death, but he is wild. One day I'm at school and this absolute... Okay, okay. I'm not going to go through, okay? Bunch of you said, yes, I want to watch more. Why? I want to know more. I want to know how to make a better world. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me show you the, the ending of this video. That's a very real possibility, but I could really use $46 billion. And that's not my life, but it is the plot of this book, The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It's a trilogy, and I just read it in literally three days. It's incredible, so you should read it. Okay, some of you are all like, man, I feel rugged, but I feel the same way too. This is, uh, let's set this low. You know I'm Jeffrey Endo. I have a group text with uh, Stavin and Farza. Stavin sent this. I'm like, Son of a, I thought this might not be real, but I, honestly, I was like, this could be real. Um, but yeah, this book like just sold out fast, and it was kind of like a side project. But I want to show you this. Um, Wait, was it her book or just somebody? No, this is just some other person <laughs> marketing a book. And uh, <laughs> 6.3 million views, pretty good. And really, what we, I want to talk about is what made this good. 
I feel I already gave the answer away. But what made it good? No. Yeah? The hook? Tell me more. Uh, like you cannot uh, not keep on watching. You have to go to get to the answer. Yeah. Shock. Shock. Shock factor. Yeah. So uh, the first thing I kind of want you to think about, you, you, all of you know this, but I want to just kind of surface all of these things you already know to the top of your head when you were thinking about this. It's curiosity gap, right? All of these frameworks are aimed to get some kind of emotion from somebody. So for curiosity gap, the emotion, it should be, I must know what's next, right? So that's pretty interesting. Um, also, I just brought this up. How many of you use TikTok? I think all of you use TikTok, right? Or IG? How many of you, when you post something, you go and study a lot of the comments? If you're, if you're not doing that, you should study all of the comments. The comments on TikTok and IG tells you a lot about like how people are thinking about things, how they're reacting, and you know, whoa. Uh, yeah, like you can go find this video and study people's reactions. Um, remember Spotify Wrapped? How many of you have Spotify? All of you go through Wrapped? Yeah, and see like, this is really interesting, right? This immediately builds curiosity gap. So a lot of times during this lecture, I wanna show you something that's more content marketing than something that's more on the product side so that we, we can kinda of hit all of you, right? So curiosity gap shows you a number and then it asks, will this year number be higher or lower? Instantly, you're interested. Okay, let's look at the next one. Again, we'll do it the same way. If you want to watch more, we will watch more. If not, we don't have to. How many of you watch or play football slash soccer? How many of you just, I do not care about sports? Okay. That's okay, that's a, this, it's a minority of the group, so it's fine. <laughs> Yo, not like that. Okay, let's watch this. But his head is always like this. He's always moving. Watch more? Yeah. Okay. Messi is known mostly for what he's able to do with his feet, but it's something that he does with his head that's equally important. Scanning is a skill performed by almost all footballers. It's when a player temporarily looks away from the ball to take in extra information that can help them once they receive it. Now, when we measure scanning, we look at something called scan rate. This is how many times a player scans in the 10 seconds before they receive the ball. Studies have shown that the higher the scan rate, the more likely you are to make a successful forward pass. Messi scans an average of five times in the 10 seconds before receiving the ball. The average Premier League forward does this just 2.8 times, making Messi almost twice as good. In the World Cup final versus France, Messi scanned the field an unbelievable. I'm going to pause right there. Well, I'm constantly observing you. Most of the non-football soccer lovers are like, tell me more about Lionel Messi. It's kind of interesting, right? So then it, it goes through and it educates you on all these things. And then... Brain and improved upon. And that's exactly what we specialize in here at Be Your Best, with our VR technology helping thousands of players around the world to become calmer on the ball. Be Your Best is designed to improve... So this whole video, again, is a product, right? But what's really interesting was uh, we actually watched this at Stavon's place last year. And we just like to learn about more about Messi. We're playing a lot of FIFA. And this video hooked us in because we want to learn what made Messi great, right? So what framework do you think these people are playing on? Yeah. Did she something? Yeah. I, I count all of this as a framework of storytelling. And I don't, we will come back to storytelling more. But I think there's something that you need to think about is that anytime you're doing storytelling for most of your stuff, it should be 
the emotion is, oh, I can understand this, I can relate this, right? So you take something that's educational, you turn it into a story, now you can remember. And now all of you are going to leave and then somebody asks, what makes Lionel Messi great? You're going to be like, well, actually what makes him great is his scanning. Do you know about scanning? Like maybe I could just imagine telling somebody about this, right? So that's like a really important uh, framework as well. Anybody seen this? Let me show you another one. This one's also really interesting. So uh, I showed this one. It's also really interesting. And, and as you look at all these examples, you should know like they kind of all these frameworks build upon each other, right? So this framework, I'm just it's contrast, right? Now obviously, I don't think this is I won't really count this as marketing. This is just content, right? But I want to show an example of how this person has baked in number one, uh, curiosity gap. Because once you see, why is it? Why do I say this is based in a curiosity gap? Any thoughts? Yeah. Is there's a mic? Like when, once you see the mic, and once you see like the background, then it's kind of just like why is what does the video have to do with it? And it also helps people who can relate to the video. This is like millennials, whatever, Gen Z. Yeah, I think. What's really interesting is like you see some kind of news and they're about to tell you about these two things. You instantly want to know, okay, what is Fox News going to say about when they was in Gen Z, right? And then um, what you're actually bringing out is contrast, right? You rarely see this kind of stuff. So, so it instantly pulls you in. And then the storytelling is baked into the song that he's doing itself, right? But so the emotion of contrast, like, damn, I've never seen anything like this. Stop you again. Um, but, oh, the slide got deleted. One important thing, though, is you don't always want to have contrast, because sometimes, depending on your niche, having contrast is actually not a good thing. But you can also take the familiarity and build upon that. So let me show you another example of uh, KO. Anybody know KO boxing? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Labib's a founder. He's also part of Founders Inc. And let me just show you. So almost all of you have seen this kind of content on IG or TikTok, right? You're very familiar with it. So in this case, they're not really doing contrast. They're taking advantage of the fact that you're familiar with this. and. Uh, how many punches do you think you can throw within 10 seconds? I would say about 50. All right, well, I got an app called here, Kyle. You can find the app store. All right, I'll give you a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Oh, shit, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Three, two, keep going, keep going, what? Good shit. How much do you think you threw? I feel confident, man, 600. Well, you actually threw 45. <laughs> you find this app in the app store. It's called Kyle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, immediately curiosity gap. Uh, I'm not even counting my punches. I don't remember last time I threw a punch, but I'm immediately like, man, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be lying if I said I was in my room. After this, I stood up and I threw some punches to see how fast I am, right? All right, dang, I ruined it. Let's say you're launching a product, just taking what you know. You're launching a product on IG, you know, on IG you can swipe on the shop. Mm -hmm. Which one would you guys pick as a first image? This one? No. This one? No. no. Bottom left? Yes. Yeah. Why? Just, just yell that out at me. It's different. Innovation. It's different than the rest of it. It stands out. Yeah. Okay, this stands out from the rest of it, but what about like, 
Think about it, right? The people, they're, they're looking at all kinds of products on IG. Symmetry, clean. So what? Clean. It's clean, this one? Yeah. I don't feel like I'm being sold to or shown a product. Yeah. Like on a subconscious level. Like it's, it's, it's yeah. art as opposed to here's, here's the product. Like I already know on the, the other three that like. Yeah. It's kind of just showing one product which is different from other pictures which are showing like a bunch of different things. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, there's only two things on the screen. It's just fabric and like patches and stuff. Yeah. And that's exactly uh, what they pick, right? I think what's really interesting about this, again, is that you have seen this kind of layout on Instagram all the time. Whereas if you put a pin, it instantly becomes interesting. But um, I don't think this will always work. But this has, they're, they're building on icon, you know, everyone's seeing everything everywhere at once. Yeah. You know, this is kind of an iconic shot. So yeah. Okay, let's get to a slightly boring one. Actually, one of my favorites. Um, how many of you are building like SaaS, things like that, non-content? Raise your hand. Yeah, this is, we're, we're really gonna dive into this as well. How do you provide people value? Somebody give me an example of your one-liner. If you're building a SaaS product, just anybody. Go ahead. Uh, it's, it's a tool to uh, manage your cloud using code. Okay. So the value prop is like, if I knew code, it's pretty clear, yeah. right? This, you usually want to be as specific as possible. So, what do you think of this so far? Would you click? Hey. Who said they would click? I know some people just click on whatever. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? Yeah, 100%. 100%, 100%. who said that? Do you say 100%? Yeah, 100%. Why? Because it's just, it paints a picture. Like, it paints a picture for what it is that is actually being offered. Yeah. Also, for free, right? <laughs> don't, don't be shy if you're offering something that saves people time or money. Do not be shy about that. What about this? Why am I losing slides? Hold on. Doesn't matter. What about this one? How many of you have seen this copy? This, this copy is so popular, please. I don't want to see any of this copy here. If in week five I see this, I'm gonna chat with you privately and also <laughs> comment. You know. What about this one? That's, that's, that's good. Yeah. Why? It's very to the point. The other ones, the ones before, it was um, very broad. It can mean anything. It doesn't tell, it tells us about this. It's very to the point. It says, okay, this is the solution that shows exactly what it's about. Yeah. I also like that you've included numbers, like thousands. Yeah. Let's take a one minute break. I need to find a link. Sorry, hold on. Where is this? No, I think it's here. Yes. Okay, break time's over. Let's get back to it. seen this how many of you how many of you use like Pomodoro method to study or whatever right many of you um, this is also a really good one I also love the fact they say learn more in less time so who is this targeted towards students. yeah students right I mean everything is targeted towards students so I think it's actually pretty good it, well first off the design of product is very simple and then they just lay out all of the value props okay
Let's look in the next part. Uh, all of you live, how many of you are based in SF before coming to SF2? Right? How many of you, when you first came to SF, you were kind of enamored with the fact that you have Uber ads, you have Notion billboards, you have Tesla, like, it's so interesting, right? I think when you start walking around, it's kind of like what Salman said, eyes open at all times. Start taking note as of examples. Here are some examples I took that caught my eye. I, I realize the first one you're gonna ask why they caught my eye, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen, seen, seen any of those, uh, these kinds of things on the streets? Right? Would you go? How many would you go to this? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Street recorded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that's my phone number, Michael. I'm just kidding. This is not my phone um, This is not compelling. Why, how could we improve this, actually? Just, just like a street one, yeah? Make it $20 off. $20 off. It already says free items. What else? I mean, mushrooms are dangerous, but like, or not dangerous, but it should be exercise and caution, right? And that, just, that's just, it's so simple. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get drugged. <laughs> yeah, you know, I forgot that we're being recorded. I'm going to move on to the next example. <laughs> um, we can have a DMW 1.5. What's up? Well, I was just going to say, yeah, for the, for the degree of seriousness that therapy entails, it looks pretty spammy. So how, like, how are you... That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. It's also black and white. What's the problem with that? <laughs> I, I just feel like it's a cheap print. Oh, right in? It just feels very busy. Like, I don't really know where to look. Yeah, that's one point, right? Like, one thing that we're also getting into is when you think about marketing, it's actually a combo of design and writing all together. And this could use a lot of visual hierarchy to make this better. Yeah? It also doesn't provide, like, the value proposition explicitly. It just says, like, it's a therapy, but you don't know if you don't have any background, like, what eh, benefits you'll get out of it. Yeah. How about this one? Oh, I've seen this one. Who? Who said that? I want to go to it. I Why do you want to go to it? I walk past it every day, and then I see the it's chill and wholesome. That's what got me. Yeah, who else? <laughs> it's interesting. I'm kind of interested. I actually took a picture, so I didn't go, but at least I took a picture of it, so I count that as I clicked it. It's chill and wholesome. When we get into writing, we're gonna start talking about like, I don't wanna busy you with like brand voice or all of those things, but just, they, they have a brand voice already, right? It's as simple as, it's chill and wholesome. Sorry, somebody else raised their hand. I mean, with the, with the border and the way that it's laid out, it actually kind of looks like a book cover, mm. um, which is like a super familiar format, and that is actually what I wouldn't expect from a poster. Like, yeah. I also love the, I caught a major vibe. I'm like, dude, this is a watercolor class. What kind of major vibes are you catching? I want to go. Um, how about this one? How many of this one are just like, damn, this, this got me? Right, all, uh, all people know how to code, right? I love this one because there's so many billboards here, all with AI just like blasting it. But it's targeted towards developers. But developers, no, just NPM AI, that's cool. Right? Uh, again, it's for sale again. I don't know about that. That's pretty cool. You know, I think they took inspo from us, which is probably why it's pretty cool. Um, they, they've actually updated this one because I've seen it, and it just says now the copy is um, what would you build? Yeah. Really like that. It's like, yeah. Did you ship really yeah, yeah. What did you ship? That was really yeah, cool. What did you ship? Sorry. Yeah. I feel like for like, the ship, like, Yeah, that's true. So, we're almost done. I told you this will be done in 45 minutes. So just kind of want to reframe this and then actually Sav and I are going to review some of the things that you have shipped. Just want to bring this back home. There are many more frameworks, but these are kind of the four that stands out to us when we think about marketing specifically. 
And I want you to take these frameworks, but I want you to start thinking of them as ingredients. Mm. And sometimes you want to emphasize one taste over another, right? Like if you're cooking a ribeye steak, you might want it to just be ribeye steak. So that might just be the value prop. You want to, do, you want to cut down noises on the other things. Uh, sometimes it's a harmony of all of them, right? But I just want to leave you with a thought. You explore all the ingredients that make up your dish when you go out to make this. Don't limit yourself to the, just those four. There's plenty more. But those are kind of the first kind of like meaty four parts. Any questions so far before we go into review stuff? Yes? So you guys laid out So when you're looking at a bunch of content and you're like, oh, I'm actually noticing this pattern. This yeah. pattern is making me feel a certain way. Like, how do you go about taking, knowing when you should actually figure that out and codify it for yourself? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I'll let Stavon speak to you. But I think most of us, whenever we're actually going out to make stuff, we're not actually thinking, oh, this checked curiosity box. This checks this. It's more, this makes sense when you reflect backwards. It's like a analysis tool when you go look at, oh, why did this go viral? Then you can start to break down what makes sense, right? But when you're actually making it, if it's not working, then you can kind of use the, the framework to see, okay, this, this is not doing anything because it's actually not doing any of these things. Yes? I want to ask a bit more about curiosity gap because I think about that a lot. And like when you kind of showed that example there, I was saying like a, a stream, I was like, the, my first thought is like, oh, how is this? I want to watch because I want to know how it's going to disappoint me. Like, <laughs> at what point is it maybe damaging or you're setting a precedent for like people to, like it hurts your brand maybe uh, using curiosity gaps and stuff. Like, I don't know, I wonder if you have any thoughts about that. Yeah, I think, I think the- That's so. Sorry. <laughs> I think the book one, those kinds of, those kind of have like, you feel like you're rubbed because you got, this is a point that we're going to drive home constantly is whenever you go on a platform, you have a different mindset on a platform, right? If you're on LinkedIn, you're looking for opportunities. If you're on TikTok, you're looking to be entertained. And that one of those is really good for you. It might feel like I got rugged, right? Mm -hmm. But then the, it depends on platform, but also your audience. So for example, the Lionel Messi one, the one with football, I didn't feel rugged. I was like, wow, this is actually really cool technology that somebody built this based off of study of uh, players. Yeah. According to you, what makes, what, what leads to word of mouth around a product? Because there are some times when, you know, I'm like, I love, you know, this song or I love this product. But then there are other times, oh my God, I love this product. You know what? Like, I'm going to talk to Brayden about it. I'm going to talk to Abel about it. So what do you think, like, breaks that threshold of you talking to other people? I think it's kind of hard. You can design like shareability, and we'll kind of talk about this, that some things are designed where it's so easily shareable with some, somebody else. A lot of times, I think for me, when it comes to word of mouth, the thing needs to immediately have a pretty strong voice, and then it needs to feel different enough that you're like, yo, check this out. What do you think, Salim? Your song's a good example, right? I fought with it, I sh you shared it with me yesterday. I shared it with four of my friends. One of them didn't like it, but she gave me like really good feedback on why did she didn't like it. And I probably made that too after, obviously. But then the other two people sent it to two of their other friends, right? And this happened. So with music specifically, it's like, if you're excited for the next time when you're driving the car and your buddies are with you and you can't wait to play that song, and expose that for them. I think that in itself is like is a testament to how good your music is, right? And it's not always going to hit a chord with all of your audience, mm -hmm. but even if it strikes a chord with a subset of the audience, that subset will continue to talk about that. So that's like in real life, right? But that can also be translated to like TikTok, right? People will save that sound, people will share that sound. We do that all the time. And the number one Thing, the most important thing is they just gotta like, vibe with it. Mm -hmm. right? And ultimately, like we overcomplicate a lot of these things in our heads, 
and even the question that you asked regarding curiosity gap, like it's ultimately like trust. Like do they trust you to put out banger content? And that's not built in one day. It's going to be built over time. So just keep like continue to work on building that trust with them. And if you're building that trust, being authentic and honest with them, uh, you can take that really, really far. Like they'll actually like cheer you on to like fuck up so that you know they can be there to support you. And you see that with even like so many big creators as well, where the world cancels them, but they can like continue to kind of like keep grinding and come back even bigger, better, and stronger, right? Logan Paul's uh, trip to Japan is a perfect example, right? He's still relevant today because he had that core audience that really understood and appreciated the message and how he was growing as an individual because people are bound to fuck up. Yeah, I think one thing with artistic stuff too, um, how many of you seen like the game Hotline Miami? Uh, what about this band called uh, Windows 96? Oh, you know Windows 96? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I bring these two up. You're like, those are really obscure uh, examples. I brought obscure examples because those, have, those are kind of cult classics. Mm. And there's something really interesting about cult classics is that cult classics, again, don't want to complicate, but there's one thing about it. You feel like it's made for you. You feel that about Windows 96? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you just feel like, wow, this person made this for me. And that, then it's like, that's kind of how that game and also that, that band just keeps getting shared, keeps getting shared. Don't have a huge following, but it's like, it lasted a decade. So yeah. All right. I want to look at some... Uh... But here, yeah, one more question. Like, you said the contrast framework doesn't apply to some issues, right? Or, so I was wondering if you have any examples. I think, well... For the one that I can always think of is like academic, right? The, the academic crowd is a niche that things need to look official. So if you stand out too much, it's just not gonna work, right? Kind of like uh, Unriddle's early days, I feel like it worked really well because it looked, you, get, you guys all know Unriddle. Um, that product looks like something that, oh, a legit like researcher would use. It's like too general in the beginning, right? And Which one? Like messy video and also the previous one. Like, because not everyone's gonna buy the product, right? So it's like they're not targeting, like filtering it out initially. But then there's also some ads that do really well that maybe like straight up like say, hey, whatever, like targeting the people that they want. So like, which 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 one felt like it's just like different ways of approach or different, I don't know. I think it's different ways of approach. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to say that. I, I actually thought those two were very niche. Like uh, who here knows funnels? Who has never heard of like tofu? What is tofu? Top of funnel? Oh. Yeah, so it's essentially like, like it's like they're just taking place in your bed, right? That if a million people watch it, 10% convert to even like checking out your website yeah. to 10% of that converting. And that's kind of like, let's just make the tofu like really, really big. And that may not even be like from your main page, you can like connect and uh, collaborate with many other influencers yeah. that can do that for you, and it's a good example of that. Uh, I think another reason not to like filter people at the beginning is that people know other people. So like, I might watch that and be like, I don't play soccer, but I was just hanging out with a friend yep. who was talking about how much he loves soccer, and I might then say, this is this part was really interesting. So I watched this part, and they start showing like the VR, maybe I'm like, okay, this is not really for me, but I might share with a friend. Yeah. So, like, I think yeah, just don't filter too early. I think sometimes people do ads are like, are you this? And then immediately you're like limited who's gonna have to see that. Yeah. Like that. I think one, that brings a really good point. You're probably willing to share it because that video has a lot of value. That video intrinsically has a lot of value. Whatever you guys create, you should, even if you're creating a, a TikTok for your product, right? It should add value to people's lives. Like that's something you gotta think about a lot. It's not just so they can sell more stuff, it's just like you're respecting the people who gives you their attention, and if you respect that, chances are you're gonna reap benefits from that. Yeah, all, right. all these frameworks are hyper extendable. Right? Even though we showed a lot of videos and we talked about we talked about video a lot because that's like our way of storytelling in many ways. But uh, last night I came across an ad 
from Jeep Wagoneer or something, their new electric truck. I took a screenshot, Jeffrey's in the market for a new electric truck. I sent it to him, right? So it's kind of like it applies to like all different, like you, you, how many times, well, I don't use email anymore, but back in the day, I just forward emails all the time to my friends that may find value in something. So think of marketing, right? Marketing as a whole is like this orchestra, and you are the conductor, and all of these are different instruments that you can, you can use to create the perfect symphony. Video being one of them, content being another one, like even like word of mouth marketing being another. So all of that kind of like encompasses what marketing is and we'll cover as much of as, uh, it as we can over the next. Uh, Should you go through this? Yeah, there's a mark here. If you're a tennis pro, looking for your... <laughs> He's not here, so. Yes, tennis racket. He did yeah. post this video. Uh, he shared this video with me. I just want you guys to take a look at it. He's, I think he shipped it on TikTok, but uh, we can talk about that briefly. The thing for you, if you want to play like Roger, check this out. So if I were to just try and do this on Amazon, um, this is kind of what the results are looking like. Not too great, as you can see. I'm looking for a tennis racket for advanced players, but instead it's showing me pickleball paddles and uh, table tennis paddles, which are both sports I also love, but uh, not exactly at all what I'm looking for. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, 10 times better. So I'm going to come over to Claros and put in the same search as I did over in Amazon and see what happens. Okay, so I've gotten some results and I'm getting back uh, Yonix and uh, Wilson Pro Staff. I own a Wilson Pro Staff, so I'm glad that it's showing up. But it's recommending the Yonix Feed Core, and here's the reason why. And it's giving me the ability to basically customize and pers- We can move on. But it's kind of like, the whole thing is like a minute and 56 seconds. Who would scroll, and at what point? Um, right after it shows what it does, I would scroll. I, I don't like like I feel like that's kind of the climax. It's like what's cl what's what's Claros? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's dope. Like because uh, right where we stopped it is kind of like okay now he's getting into tennis or something. I don't know anything about tennis. Yeah. So um, so I think that um, I think that yeah. I hope that answers your question. I think one of the first things he said was like, "Are you a tennis player?" Nope. <laughs> I would have just scrolled. Right <laughs> <there. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I scroll as soon as he starts listening um, tennis, like on Amazon. I'm just like, I'm not interested in this at all. And then I like it's not very engaging. Yeah, I churned from like the WhatsApp video he sent me. I churned. I, I didn't even watch the whole thing. The first two seconds, I was like, I don't know. We'll review it, I guess. Of course, everyone to watch it. But I'm like, so the point is, like, get directly into the value proposition. Uh, he waits hella long. I was really happy with. So if you look at how he starts, right? Do you know how to read that? Well, it doesn't matter. But I made it like, even further. So I have a pretty geez. big hand, so <laughs> I, I, <laughs> four to five times. I made I made a new way to find the best products on Amazon, right? And could just go directly in it. Uh, or make it hyper specific and not really kind of like drag on for 30, like 30, 40 seconds is showing off the product. Yeah. And just pace, like the platform dictates your pace. TikTok is super fast. So you have like essentially, the hook needs to be in the first three to five seconds or you're fucked. Yeah, I was gonna say like, I think even the format, it was like really hard to see what he was looking at. Like I think he could have made it more like mobile friendly. Yeah. I just thought like, I didn't even yeah. show the product like it's like hard to see what's, what's being shown. Yeah, and half of it is in landscape, and the other half. Of it is in <laughs> yeah. So when, he, when, I, when I saw the thumbnail, I was like, bro, he's t so TikTok has this new thing where they're literally pushing uh, landscape videos that are a minute and longer. So I was like, bro, he's learning. But yeah. As soon as I checked out, I was like, fuck. He's just what's right? so it's kind of like pick a path and just go with it. What's interesting too is, I. Almost every every season, people always come to Josh and I, just all the team, like, how do I be funny? And uh, it's like, <laughs> it's just, it's hard. But to answer Ishmael's question, this is actually a really good example about the funnel, is that if you go directly into the funnel, uh, the uh, top, 
something you know here I can find something at Amazon jump right in value prop I doesn't cut out people like you right you don't play tennis uh, the next thing is like that's when humor could be really good because not only are you capturing everyone because everybody shots on Amazon you could find a product that's just hella funny and then now the, the video becomes like 10x better mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So we talked about that I think this was near to post. Yeah. Uh, I love the video, everything's great. I think just minor things, we'll talk about that next week. A little foreshadowing here, I guess. Uh, the contrast on this shit is atrocious. You're already spending so much time creating the video. Uh, it legit will take you like five minutes to make it so much more aesthetic. Even though your purpose is not to like show it to a lot of people, just for yourself. But no, great, great stuff. Uh, Mateo, do you want to take this? Yeah. So it? No, I just did my part. I haven't looked okay, at Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how would you make, can you guys see that? Let's make that a little bit bigger. All right, how would you guys make this better? It did pretty well, but we'll talk about it, but how can we improve upon this? The developers, you know? yeah? Does the copy seem a little bit long? Like, I don't know if I want to read that all on Twitter. Make the value proposition in the first sentence. Yeah. 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 Will that be yeah, better? Yeah. Even like just uh, work with an eraser. I always tell myself like even like introducing AI generated dashboards on Super Dash. It's like generate AI dashboards on Super Dash. Like you can work with an eraser and just like kind of like make it super scannable for people. So that as they're kind of like going in the sea of scroll on whatever what, whatever Twitter is. Uh, they'll be able to kind of like stand out. And then this line also cannot, uh, all you need to do is connect your dashboard and then you'll be able to visualize your charts, get insights and track metrics. But even then, that's this is still like. All right, and uh, dude, this is find of the week. The best DM that I got from you guys was from Ryan. Ryan, you wanna talk about this? Yeah, um, this is actually the day that you guys did the last BMW. And literally, I know Southern said, uh, we shouldn't be optimizing for virality, but somehow in our group chat, Ronick introduced um, these follower-based accounts where as these followers get added, or as you follow this account, you are added to, let's say, the conga line around the earth, right? Um, but for this one specifically, it's called Statville. Um, and what, the, what it is, is like, as you follow, now you're a statism, and the city pretty much expands as with every follower. So then a new house would pop up by the next video. And what's interesting too is they took it a step further and on the story it would say, would you guys like a Ferris wheel here, right? And then it's like, they would show like two different designs. Do you want this one or this one? And I just found it so sick because, I mean normally these accounts are like, you're just a, a person in the conga line, and that's it. But there's so much more engagement here. And so what was interesting, too, is that there were accounts that were popping up, like the Statville supermarket. And they literally were posting every day, here's like the bananas that are on sale. And people were literally engaging with those really like niche accounts. And I was just like, this is so cool. Um, it was they made on like, a blender. They have like voting on their lives about what to do next. They have. Uh, these kind of like Can I call you Rose? Good morning, Step. Stepville, the city that grows with each new follower. Welcome to another monthly update. Over the past month, our city has grown by nearly 80,000 statisans. A warm welcome to all of you. As decided by our own community, a ski resort has been opened to the northeast of the city with a considerable variety of trails, a terrain park, good restaurants, and of course, hot chocolate. It's the perfect destination for a holiday retreat. See you on the slopes, and be sure to share your suggestions for our city's future developments in the comments. Dad, are you liking another city update? Yeah, wait, uh, did you just call me Dan? Yeah. I don't care. No. It's beautiful. Anyway. Uh, yeah, as always, if you find anything cool, send it our way and we'll, we'll talk about it at lunch. Uh, you know where to find us, and yeah, that's basically it. Cool. Cool.